Today we're going to have a look at the CC Radio EP Pro, particularly with regards to its uh, ferrite rod antenna, which is one of its fairly unique features. And of course it has a very good narrow filter, which is very clear and doesn't give you a sort of muffled sound, which a lot of the very narrow filters do. It lets through the audio, the speech, particularly the speech, and also even music uh, lets it come uh, able to be heard very clearly. Okay, one of the things about this radio is that it, it, you need an accurate frequency readout. Now, unfortunately, this is like an analog-style dial on this particular radio. So, uh, although the markings for um, medium wave are, are, are accurate, you can't see where they start or finish. So, I've made up a dial strip, which I've added to my radio, which you can see here. Let's move the camera a bit closer. Uh, at the bottom of the radio here, let's put it on, we can put the light on as well. So every, you, for instance at 500, 600, 700, all the way up to 1700, I've made accurate markings. So the radio's only got 1400, it jumps to 1600, so there's no 1500. So I've added the 15, and then in between markings as well, so there's uh, 1650, 1750. So that gives you a good starting point because with the um, fact that it's 10, every 10, you're stepping every 10 when you turn the dial one notch. So you can you can whiz up if you want to get to 1,040, you can whiz up to 1,000 and then you count as you turn the dial 10, 20, 30, 40 and you'll be spot on 1040 kilohertz. So that that's definitely a... a an essential thing to have on the radio so it's a pity that they didn't actually put markings on uh, similar to this i suppose with a string cord type dial mechanism uh, each radio is a little bit different so i suppose uh, you'd have to actually do this uh, sort of hand calibrate every radio and that's probably not practical but they still could have incorporated some markings that would at least give you a bit of a a starting point. I know there's a logging scale up top here, but I'm not particularly interested in logging scales. I want the actual reading directly on the medium wave dial. Okay, let's have a look at the twin coil um, ferrite antenna, what makes the radio special. Over here is the patent. This you can get off the internet. You can look it up quite easily. Here's the twin coil design. As you can see there's 40 turns there and 40 turns on there. And there's a matching network over there. That matching network is basically, you'll see here the reason for that. I explain it in the patent. Uh, twin coils like this, they tend to cancel out one another because they're in opposite phase. So that's what you get like that with a signal. So then they've incorporated a phasing unit, a matching phasing unit over here. And that then, then makes the two coils combine to give you one signal. So it's a very clever uh, design, and later on they actually show you the actual um, amplifier circuit, which they use a reactor diode for the tuning instead of a variable tuning capacitor. And that's the circuitry there, but I won't go into that. There's the coil where it attaches over here. I tried, had a go at making one of these coils, but I couldn't get the uh, phasing unit to work correctly, and of course that tends to cancel out, so I eventually ended up with a single coil design. Over here on the computer, you can see the actual coil, the actual uh, ferrite rod with the coils on it. Now, the latest design is, in fact, a quad coil. And of course, the computer's gone off. Okay, nice. Okay, we're back again. <laughs> so, there's 16 turns on this one, and 16 on that. So, there's 32 on this side. There's one hiding under there with 16, and another 16 over here. So, 32 on either side. And underneath here, is the coupling coil for the external antenna on the radio. Those of you who see these radios will know that they have a very nice uh, rear antenna connector at the back here uh, for connecting external antennas. And they've got the spring clip type ones over here. So that's for your AM or medium wave external antenna, as it should be called correctly. And that's your FM F type connector and you can get an adapter which goes to BNC or SA239. I like the BNC because it's lightweight and compact, not as clumsy as the BNC one. And up at the top here of course is the switch 
which one switches over the external antenna up the top and this tiny little switch is also a bit of a pain because it's a bit small. They could have made that the same as the top one that switches between 9 and 10 kilohertz. Uh, I suppose the reasoning being that if you're in the northern hemisphere you're only going to be on 10 all the time but of course I'm down in the southern hemisphere so I have to switch the thing between the two. It generally stays on 10 because for obvious reasons it's easier to count in 10s than it is in 9 kilohertz. Nine uh, steps of nine hertz going up. Um, okay, so that's basically the main advantages of the EP Pro, and the, what, of course the, the tuning knob on the side here, which is also shown in many of the videos, that works extremely well. That has a, a sort of normal position in the middle here, and you can tune it up or down. To peak the signal and also if there are two stations on one frequency by turning it one way or the other you can then bring the one station into better tune than the other so you just you, you kind of eliminate the other station you split the two stations so you can hear the one that you want to tune into so that works extremely well and it's definitely a, a very nice feature as I said this is a great medium wave DX radio the reason that I bought it and you don't need any, really an external antenna and I'm receiving stations here a good 8,000 plus miles away just on the ferrite rod antenna and that's quite amazing. Okay I hope you found this a little bit interesting thank you very much.